then was picked in the other game and dominated actually the top lane. Echo Fox, the only team to be playing Kale in pretty much the world right now. Teams knew. There was an inkling. You saw the Kale ban and we're like, where's that Kale ban going from? We did some research. Oh, it's KFOs. He gets it and it looked pretty good. Definitely got some trouble in that lane and he won't even have a chance this time. Kale ban first along with the Kog'Maw. Yeah, this is one of the advantages of playing a champion that no one else in your league plays. Unless Echo Fox scrims TSM, TSM will never get practice against Kale as a team because no one else has it in their champion pools mm -hmm. currently. So instead of having to deal with this wild card on the team, uh, they are red side, they have to burn a ban on it. So this may leave the Lulu up. Decide who will get that one. Nidalee and TF are both going to be banned as well. Don't want to give Bjergsen any clean map pressure. We saw the ways teams have been kind of shutting down Bjergsen is more wave clear than he has. Keep him in mid lane. Don't allow him to help other lanes. Yeah. Bjergsen hasn't been as dominant as he's been in past splits, mm -hmm. but it's not to say he has been playing poorly. Right. The team has been struggling. He just has been near the top instead of way above everyone else. Interesting ban choices here. A lot of stuff still available. Corky, Fiora, Lulu, as right. you mentioned. Even Gangplank. So they, the, the Poppy is still there for Hanser, something we were looking for him to take last time in regards to kind of going on a champion that didn't fit the team, that Poppy was still there. Maybe they resort to it this time. If it is not the final ban, Gangplank could be left there. It's actually still going to be the Lulu. Lulu and Kog'Maw, both off the chart. Yeah, so I mean, if we're following the trends, Echo Fox would want Corky. And there it is. <laughs> That's been their first pick when they've had the opportunity to do so. That does leave Gangplank up. Also, Gragas, who's been the most picked jungler in the LCS since his buffs. I do like me some Gragas games. A lot of action packed into that barrel. <laughs> yeah, something like Gragas Alistair here wouldn't be a terrible thing. But that would leave Gangplank up. I mean, it depends what... Uh, type of proficiency KFO has on Gangplank. Because Froggen has played Gangplank in the mid lane. Technically, Echo Fox could still do that and just throw Corky for Keith. Callista is also something that's almost always banned. This is actually smarter. I did there not realize that Callista wasn't there. Callista Alistair is the bottom lane you want. And my, my mind got locked on the Alistar. I was like, was that even last game pick ban? And I knew it wasn't pick, but no. Coming in here as Alistar being one of the most picked ban across the world, locked in with the Callista comp for TSM. So they definitely have some engage. Yeah, we were looking earlier about Alistair's pick rate across uh, LPL, Korea, Europe, and North America. Most picked, I think it was 232 games with 116 wins and 116 losses. Yep. Uh, is that balanced? You know, the most <laughs> picked, but he's 50% he's win rate? Uh, no, he's a little strong because he's always being picked right. when he's available. Uh, TSM locks him down. This game will decide whether he has a winning win rate or a losing win rate oh. across those four regions. Yellow Star, if you only knew. <laughs> So much pressure. What do you got? Hard looking for Gragas. They get the jungler out of the way. Since TSM did not decide to pick that one in the first round, they do want to be able to get something. And yeah. it's going to be the Malphite. I, Interesting. I feel like I've seen this team composition before, Riv. Uh, Corky mid lane, Malphite top. This time it's a little bit of a tankier jungler. They've ran the Malphite Corky mm -hmm. once with Elise and another time with Graves. That was week five against Renegades, then Energy. So I know Echo Fox is like, man, I really hope we can show success with some different team compositions. Yeah. But unless the team composition is getting taken away from them, they're just going to keep drilling it because they have plenty of practice and plenty of success with those soul lanes. I think Braum on this one, possibly, on the side of Echo Fox when they need to support. Looking at Quinn here. Hauntzer, again, they're going to hover it. They have 15 <laughs> seconds left. I feel like that's a tongue-in-cheek hover right there from Bjergsen. He's like, yeah, are you sure you don't want to play Quinn against Malphite? This is getting dangerously long. There's a smile on his face. There, all right, yeah. all right. <laughs> Here we go. You giant troll, Bjergsen. <laughs> he knows it, too. Nautilus being locked in for Hauntzer in the top lane. They're going to give him a beefcake to work with. A double lift. Uh, Elise for Svens. Karen. Uh, yeah, we know. She's, she's making a comeback, but not today. Today, Keith could be locking in the gin. We've only seen it really from Sneaky. And they also have the Lucian or the Caitlyn, something they've been running with this comp consistently. Yeah. I think you're right about that, Riv. It would be something like Lucian Braum. Right. Or they, they have the potential to give Gangplank mid lane and throw Corky bottom lane and do that 
That old yeah. cop loves flexing picks in yeah. the end of the draft That's just to kind point. of reset your expectations. But that type of swap doesn't have much value here because Team Solomon hasn't picked their mid laner yet. So there would be no surprise That's right, here. you're guessing. And they're going to go with Lucian Braum, I think, because that's more standard for them. You would have to play a better guessing game on the side of Fox. Yeah. Try and lock down what Bjergsen wants here. At that point, you're just outsmarting yourself. You're just like, oh, we can we can change the expectation of the viewer, but like it doesn't actually have an <laughs> impact in game. Is it Victor? Yes, going up against Corky. So Victor offers some pretty substantial burst uh, against Corky one of the champions that doesn't get shoved in by the Quirky in the mid-game. Something Bjergsen hasn't played much in the LCS, no. but he was one of the first adopters of Victor. He was one of his main champions when TSM actually won IM Katowice just under a year ago. Right. That tournament will, of course, be taking place next weekend. LCS will be on hiatus for TSM to go to Katowice again. I mean, to reference that, it's even something he kind of forgot he played at Katowice. He's like, man, that win on Victor felt great. Yeah, and I then like that champion. He was like, oh, yeah, actually, I have played it before. So the mechanics are there, riding a bike, Whoop. but maybe over to walking on a ball. Looks like he's going to go with the Oriana this game. Yeah. Interesting. I like it. I haven't seen that lately from him at all. I'm actually never a huge fan of last picking the Oriana because I feel like she is one of the best blind pick mid laners that is just your kind of general do everything champion. Uh, and you don't get you don't get counter pick value out of that that very last pick. Even so, Corky is one of those champions that doesn't have too many hard counters. It still fits within the overall Team Solomon composition. Slightly more shields and heals. Yep. It's going to be very hard to kill Nautilus here for Echo Fox. Mm -hmm. One thing that clocks in my mind there, just a fun thing really, is it's so annoying and you usually don't think about it is that the Braum shield can block the ball and mess up so many ultimates if it actually happens. It's it's easy to throw it around Braum, but definitely be looking for that in this game. I've experienced and done that. It yeah. feels, feels good. We'll be watching for it because there's a high probability that those Orioles have a giant impact in this game if they can catch either Froggen or Keith. Right. Those are pretty much the only damage dealers for Echo Fox. So if they go down, TSM wants to fight. So will Echo Fox get into TSM's hen house? Tweet at LOL Esports. Your predictions for this game with hashtag FoxWin or hashtag TSMWin. We'll check in with your votes in just a few minutes as always. Or we won't. Maybe we won't. Maybe we will. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, we'll just do what we want. <laughs> There's no rules here. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. I like the I made a sign day. Fist bump to that guy. Let's get into this one. Second game of the day. Echo Fox versus TSM. Can Echo Fox keep the streak going? Yeah, it's been quite a ride for them coming in since here, but TSM wants to bounce back strong. I would say that was a 3 out of 10 TSM chant yeah. uh, for the crowd. One of the weaker chants I've heard. They're wondering, should, they're like, should I chant Echo Fox? They're should doing I, I well. Chant TSM, they're only 7 and 5 this year. I don't know. I'm torn between. Five games out of first. <laughs> Oh, this has burned a few teams in the past. That's why TSM places a ward before walking in. Mm -hmm. Face checking that against a Braum can very quickly lead to your death. You will lose. KFO's English has improved. Uh, that <laughs> you will you lose was well spoken. Very clean. In all actuality, though, KFO has been getting English tutoring for several hours a day, every day. And when you hear the little bits of him communicating in game when we show them afterwards, it actually seems like his English is getting very good. He's able to get most of the basics out, say he's engaging, he's right. understanding what his team is calling, which I think is one of the big reasons the coordination for KFO just feels so much better yeah. from when we saw him in week one to when we see him now. The fact that it's cleaner makes those plays happen seconds faster. Because initially you you want to speak your, your native language. It's just going to come out as the mm -hmm. quickest you want to get that idea across. So with that help, it definitely will clean things up on the team. Everybody's done floating around and dancing in the river. We're going to get back to the lanes here. We've got stretched out. Nobody's going to pull a hammy. And yeah. we're on to the game. Looks like they're going to start it. Yeah, nope. in Incredibly mirrored start, actually, and a lot of time being wasted I'm gonna push in, yeah. by Lucian and Braun because they were spotted by the ward in the river when they tried to do the invade. So Hanser and Svenskeren wanted to clear that without getting harassed. They do not get harassed. Svenskeren gets all of the experience. And now Keith is a little bit late to the lane on the other side. Same thing happened for Echo Fox on the bottom side of the map where Yellowstar and Doublelift invaded to push them out of that side of the jungle. 
So big game of cat and mouse going on right now. And TSM is ahead on the experience curve because they were able to clear one camp in their side of the jungle, whereas Echo Fox abandoned all of them. See once it gets to the turrets. Should be quite even when we see Fox head towards that top side. And TSM is going to stay towards the bottom. An unfortunate lane swap, but we will see how the mid lane plays out because now this leaves them on an island. We see Bjergsen already taking those cues. Not so much focused on the back line for Froggen there. He's kind of letting his wave build up. So Froggen has some trouble possibly at that turret. Yeah, and if this lane swap continues to be fairly standard, Froggen and Bjergsen would be able to just have the isolation matchup right now. The big question mark, though, for Froggen is where is Elise? Everyone else is shown on the map from TSM, but he does have to kind of respect that Elise gank. Uh, the benefit of that is he has a minion wave, and he's also cheating towards the left side of the lane. So right. even if Sven Skarin were to try and gank, Froggen could easily walk away. That's why he's able to position so far up in this lane. This is actually exactly what Corky wants in the early game, and lane swappings are, swaps are fairly good for him, at least in the way they're currently played out, because yep. there's there's no real way Sven Skarin can gank that lane, and it makes him, it allows Froggen to play mm. extremely aggressive early on. Everything is basically known without being really seen on that bottom side because of the actions here. Hard, mm -hmm. the rest of the map. Easy for Froggen, takes control of that lane. 21 to 19, but more so in damage, having Bjergsen at a moment where he can really kind of push him out of lane. Top turret's gonna go down along with Bot, and they equally trade those. The back and forth actually proves quite useful for Bjergsen. He gets in onto Froggen, brings him down to about half, and makes him ch chug that corruption. Yeah, well, looks like the CS is pretty equal yeah. for these guys, so uh, all Bjergsen needs to do is keep even in CS early on in this lane and then respect the package once Froggen is able to pick it up. He's liking to stay towards that top side and gets himself a ward so he can keep clearing waves as such. Also has an easy escape over a wall to distance himself from someone, so it's easier for Corky to stay next to those. Now double it back to top to soak up all of this. A slow going in the beginning game. Forward pink wards here. TSM feels like they'll be able to control these a little bit quicker than Echo Fox is going to be able to respond. KFO has to run right now, actually. Uh, or just... Oh, they found hard, which means it's even worse for KFO. Yeah, well, his recall has been channeling for a while. He will be able to get out, actually. Okay. So, he reads the situation properly. It is going to be non-ideal for him, though, since he is just sitting on 5 CS and level 2. And look at all those minions that are now dying to the turret. Yeah. But because... Hard wasn't able to make it under the turret to make it a 2v3 dive, which would have been difficult and dangerous. Would have been an easy 1v3 dive, and TSM beat them to the spot. Uh, Echo Fox accepts the loss of minions, and KFO is able to at least keep his life. Gets pretty good on that one. Had to make the same move on his Kale as well. He's definitely been a target for teams to hit in the early part of the game, that level, pre-level 6 towards the top lane. Like TSM will finally get something out of it though. The turrets there is with the pressure they added in the forward wards as long as Rift Herald. So control still keeps in their favor. They have the objectives and now they have yeah. a way lead yeah. on those turrets. They are way ahead in this lane swap tempo right now. They two man the turret down yeah. while two other people are taking Rift Herald and they still take the turret down faster. And it looks like Echo Fox has actually abandoned the push on the second turret. Yeah, they so they're accepting an even greater loss here. Just to get KFO some CS. They could have stayed on that turret a little bit longer, but I think they were afraid of an extended push by TSM, in which case they would have just been caught in that terrible situation where sometimes you see teams giving up inhibitor turrets because there's just no way to Right, you lock. try to stick with it and you say, maybe we're faster. Ah, that's a gourd. Sven Skarin auto pathing through the jungle. <laughs> that's all it is. You click on ra you click on the wolves. I'm going there. And the auto path doesn't take you through the brush. So if you ever want to make sure you're scanning for pink wards, like Sven Skarin is actually being really lazy right now. There are two potential pink ward spots that he did not check. The one at the blue buff and then the other one on the upside right. of the river, especially because Echo Fox just had four people bottom side, so you need to clear that side of the jungle. It's, it, it takes it, one second. In the, same, in the same thought of I'm placing a pink to go aggressive, it should be also the thought of are there pinks around me? Yep. One and the same. That vision is gone, though. It does get moved away because I th the other ward was placed. Yeah. So. Pink ward gets moved anyway. Yeah. There you go. And now kill. Guess, guess he knows better. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> so 
a good way for Hauser to be picking up. And it looks like he may get himself in some trouble if he tries to go too far here. We do see Svenskeren is backed off. He's going to focus on the board. And he may actually still have That's himself a in people. a pretty big amount of trouble. That's one. If he flashes over the wall, he's going to find Keith. And instantly locked down by the concussive blows. Great kill. First blood going over to Fox. Yeah, and... I like the gank by Echo Fox, but I dislike hard jumping in for the kill there. He was dead to rights. You give that kill to your AD carry, I think. Or you give it to your Malphite, who's been starved yep. early on in the game. The jungler does not need it right now. Uh, we'll see, though, if that accelerates his path to Runeglaive and he can make a big play on that side. The pressure from bottom, or pressure from Echo Fox in the bottom, I should say, means TSM's gonna try and take what they can. All of these wards paying off in this top side, finally after they got that turret. So not losing too much. Yeah, Haunter went down. That's a bit of pressure in the bot lane, but he's still 24 to 11 in that CS and going to be doing better in items as well. Yeah, he's still 200 gold up on KFO uh, and a level ahead. So the gank hurts, but TSM just had such a big lead from Rift Herald and the two turrets to one that you also add to the fact that that was a gank on one side that had a large time investment. Doesn't cost them too heavily if they can get something back on this turret. How hard did they decide to go? Braum there as well. We just saw Keith back, so he's going to want to provide some help to that bot side. Or I should say bottom of top. Yeah, this is where TSM actually starts to spread him real thin. Fox over the wall. He's doing big things just to kind of steal his jungle camps away. I guess the team isn't losing too much on it. Wow. Good moves for a big guy. Absolutely. Got to look at the mid lane as well in this game where Bjergsen has the CS advantage over Froggen. One thing about laning against a Corky, even though he is a marksman, you can still build against him as if he is a mage because he does so much magic damage. Yeah. So the build path is not disrupted at all for Bjergsen. We'll be able to go with that early Athenes. What will the play be? We've seen TSM take these games very, very late with a lead like this. I mean, it's already you're looking at 2K before 10 minutes. And then it's a 40 minute fight, the other team finds it, gives them a way right back into the game, a way to two inhibitors instantly. It doesn't seem like the advantages are getting, or grabbed to the inhibitors this early, and it hurts TSM. They need to find those now instead of later when the other team can get more off of it. Well, we know Echo Fox is very comfortable playing in the very late game. As Absolutely. Well. It's frogging. Yeah. That's where he used to live. <laughs> yeah. The late game. The liquid game. In just under an hour, they take down <laughs> Team Liquid. It was about 57 minutes last week in their first win. That's when the game can really go either way once you get into that stage. Unfortunate, those timers playing into quite a bit this year now that the players are kind of adjusted to them. You see Imm Immortals using them very, very effectively. You lose one thing, you lose a lot. Whoop. There's one. Bergson way puts out that ultimate, and it's really to win the lane for himself here. He knows that's going to draw pressure from Fox. Looks like he just wanted to clear up for the time being. Yeah, if he can get someone to cover the lane and force Froggen back to base, knowing that his package is down, it's a time for TSM to start the dragon. So that's a great pressure play by TSM right there. It's also a good point, the package not being there. Yeah, saw the window to get the shockwave off of Harass, and he does so. He already has a lot of CDR because of his Athene's Unholy Grail, so his ultimate will be back in 90 seconds. CDR is 25% currently, and it's going to be a dragon. TSM continuing to just play this early game quite well. So, hard getting himself into the top side. They know they're losing a bit. Fox is trying to keep that a, as level as they can. They know they're losing something. They're making moves to grab something else, whether it be an objective or pushing out a wave. Hopefully it starts to mount up to something quite soon because they are falling behind even faster. Since Garen's still clearing out the wards, a little bit more vigilant about that now as the game moves on and he knows that Echo Fox is out of their lanes. And this is an example of one of the worries you have with Echo Fox, since in their wins, Froggen plays a very lane-dominant style. KFO also usually has a CS lead, and they play this slow laning game where they just kind of put up wards, win their lanes, and then wait for the team fights to happen. But then you look at a team like TSM, who has done nothing but recruit top talent, 
and they're very, very good in lanes as well. So TSM is currently, they out-rotated yeah. them in the early game with some strategy, and then especially in mid lane, they're just beating them straight up by small margins. But all those small margins added up together become a big lead, yep. and it will put Echo Fox at a big disadvantage by the time they reach those later game team fights, which we'd expect from their play. So TSM kind of punishing the weaknesses that Echo Fox could potentially show. Yellow Star was saying the game has play has been cleaner and he wants that to be shown. He's very proud of what the team can put out in each lane. They have seemed to kind of not be able to get those results, however, from practice onto the rift lately. This seems like one of those games that could actually flourish to be something of that. 13 minutes onto this one, and now they're onto the mid turret here, about to break that last outer one. The wave clear is just a bit too much, so it's gonna be taking over the jungle, something they can confidently do. Starving Echo Fox out of their farm right now. And it's becoming a big catch-up game for Echo Fox. Even if they want to force a fight outside of their mid lane turret, Keith is down bottom lane. They are constantly behind on these mini waves. Nautilus shoves faster than the Malphite. Oriana has all the cooldown reduction, so Bjergsen can shove as well. Callista is able to keep up with Keith just from kill pressure perspective because they've been winning these straight-up matchups. And it's giving just TSM this accumulating gold lead. Top of lift puts himself in quite a scary spot there, thinking he might get a 1v1 maybe. Also looking for early CSing. Frog and clearing out the jungle. Echo Fox is actually playing this one very, very safe as well. Their wards slowly pushing up, but really confining everything to the river, so they're not as sure where TSM is going to be coming from all the time. Yeah. He clears, waiting for Haunter to get that lane pushed, as you said. Still looking for Bjergsen. He's been pushing out Frog in the mid lane, 146 to 141. That's still all clear, but there does need to be a bit of respect paid to bot. This TSM starts to push that up once again. Yep, because Echo Fox is in a really tough spot right now. Froggen has enough gold to buy a Trinity Force, but he doesn't want to leave because doing that will give a thousand gold to TSM as they kill them at turret. They just can't That's get tough. two base, two buy items. Nothing, Therefore, they're consistently pushed back. Nothing is happening on a clock that Fox can actually work with right now. That was a nice disengage to get out of the Ooh. ultimate. Nice and played. That's the flash for Yellow Star, the ultimate for Bjergsen. So a bit of safety here for Fox, but I'm sure they don't want to pressure too much. Yeah, really tight flash there by Hards Gragas. That would have been certain death if he wasn't able to flash that properly. Uh, but he does, and this could have bought. This did actually buy a window for, mm -hmm. for Froggen to recall as well. So they have to make a pretty substantial play just to not lose a turret during Froggen's recall. He picks up the package though, gets back really quickly, and they buy themselves some time. Might be able to do something here. The 15 minutes, he could have had it even a few minutes ago. Maybe he would have spiked for the dragon and would have been quite a bit of help. So he knows he needs to somehow get that power on the board and make it affect TSM. This actually killing hard probably could have meant yeah. that turret and so, damage on the second tier. He's in a cocoon and actually Ooh. it felt like hard was just spamming his flash key and as soon <laughs> as the cocoon was out, he goes there. But uh, would have been ideal if Yellow Star could have flashed in a little sooner, chain it with the pulverize then there's no way he could have ever gained Gax access to his flash, and the Shockwave would have killed him, but just, you know, a tenth of a second slow. Bellstar loses his flash, and they do not get the kill. Look at how far they're pushed up in each lane, though, still able to quickly get aggression on any turret pretty much after a play, whether it goes for them or not. Bot lane's being held off, so Keith isn't getting any farther. Something the early game that are from the early game that played in TSM's favor so much is that that turret still uh, stands behind Hauntzer and was not able to be grabbed in that lane swap. It's really hurt Fox. Yes. Well, that's gonna happen on this one. You see Yellowstar already waiting on the side. If this was a flash up, I'm sure he'd already be over that wall and in there. They're staying with the turret and definitely overstaying their welcome. The headbutt back. Big's gonna take some damage. That stopped the ball up, actually, and they're gonna move it out of this one. Unbreakable Will is on, and they start to tag onto Svenskaren with that calling, but everything's disengaged. Echo Fox can kind of take these fights. They do lose the turret, though. Yeah, I would still say mission accomplished there for TSM because sure. they gained the turret without suffering any casualties. And surprisingly, Big actually didn't even have to burn his flash to get out of there, so very low summoner spell usage in any of these fights. Neither team really willing to go all in. Good choice as well. Keeps them very safe here. TSM knows they can lose these outer turrets if they are to go down. Waves aren't exactly super pushed up with them only being at the second tier of Echo Foxes. 
However, Echo Fox is trying to get some of those wards forward. However, TSM has placed a ton of pinks on that top side. Yeah, really interesting move right here, though, because Hauntzer is off in the top lane. He does have teleport up, so he could match. And Echo Fox beat TSM to the spot on Dragon. But because they have a gold disadvantage, if they start the Dragon, they will be taking a lot of fire against a team who is statistically stronger than them. So this is very dangerous by Echo Fox. They're hoping TSM would final in, but there comes the TP. Needlessly large rod for Bjergsen now, looking for where the ball goes for an ultimate here. It's on Yellow Star. He starts to back out, wait for the combo. Big now in the front. Unbreakable is up. Once that goes down, there's much more of a chance for this alt to happen. And look at Bjergsen just sets it in the middle, trying to hold it. KFO is up team. so far. He wants to fight. Bits of damage being traded back and forth. KS KFO with the flash in. Hit out. Three man shockwave. There goes the Thunderlords. They're on to Froggenhaus. He's forced to flash. And it's on to Big Pearson. The move and dissonance to take down Key. And that's going to be the double kill. More than that, though, three overall just for Svenskaren. The dragon is still TSM's. Yep, TSM was statistically stronger, and Echo Fox was posturing very aggressively. TSM properly punishes right there. River, fight, Bjergsen lands a big shockwave, and it's enough to turn the fight around. TSM higher level, more items, and the dragon was started by Echo Fox, so all the advantages were in the favor of TSM, and they capitalized. Strong play. I was just saying the vision's up top, but it really didn't matter. They had the power to stand in there, and they put the vision down once they needed it. We'll see it one more time here. Once they get into the fight, it was all about KFO, and it shouldn't yep. be. Yeah, well, he it lands an ult on Svenskaren and Bjergsen, but he doesn't get one on Doublelift, which I think was the critical one. Uh, and then the last bit of initiation does catch KFO on the side. Yeah. Also have to credit the exhaust of Yellowstar onto Keith right as Keith dashed in, so he couldn't get damage out during the Malphite ultimate either. Kind of goes more and more troubling for Echo Fox, and it's looking better and better for TSM. Looking at just about 3,000 here. <laughs> Shoutouts to Big from Rick Fox. Big, very, very vocal in these fights. And when Keith is on Lucian, you might just hear him on stage shouting out, save that Lucian. We can get to 56 minutes again. Yeah. Uh, Keith will be able to hit max items. As of now, he is way behind the curve uh, for double lift. It's a 0-1 and 2 Lucian against a 1-0 and 2 Callista, plus a turret advantage. It's a 1,300 gold lead the double lift has. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, it's those swiftness boots as well as the two completed offensive items. That's a massive point of power for Callista in these games. Feels good for the AD carry as well. Much more confidence in your play and how kind of far you can push yourself in these. The crowd control is pretty good on the other side, but if you know that alts, or a few of those alts are down, Dublis can go very hard in these fights with the crowd control he has in defense. Back and forth in Ward Wars. Looks like Sven Skarin will come out on top there. Looks to set up a play with the team. Maybe on somebody roaming here, or maybe as double if bait. Looks like the option is just to move in for now. TSM flexing their muscles as they move through. Teleport on KFO. He's going to try to get as far away from the team as possible and do as much damage and be a nuisance on the other side of the map. But I think it's going to be slow going on that one for Echo Fox. Yeah, he does have the Sunfire Cape, which will kill minions faster now than right. previously. But the time is limited. And Yellowstar is looking for a dive. He also has Distortion Boots so he can Flash Initiate more frequently. He wants it over and over. Yeah, unless Fox was willing to teleport in now, they're going to lose that maturity. Oh, man. On to hard. Double lift staying on the side of the wall there. Can't really be busted up by a cask if he was in that position. That'll bust him up, though. KFO goes in. He's quite t quite big. And Froggen right to the back of the fight. But he doesn't want to be there at all. He got in, looked before he leaped, and couldn't get out. KFO actually stays alive after the initiation. But the follow-up, there was actually too much from, from Fox. Yeah, Echo Fox tries to stop the bleeding, but in doing so, they just rip the wound right open, and everything falls apart there for Echo Fox. Uh, not a clean initiation. Hard was collapsed on before TSM needed to commit to anything. They easily kill him, and then yeah. the teleport positioning from KFO was suboptimal. They did not have the ward control, and it's because TSM has been applying so much map pressure that Echo Fox just can't get the proper setup and it's showing when these team fights play out. TSM very, very strong as they get towards these inner turrets. They seem to play so well in these tight spots. 
yeah. knowing there's only a corridor to fight. There are just not good wards for KFO to teleport in on, so he would have needed to be there as the Gragas is running up. He does catch double lift, but it's kind of too little too late, Ooh. and the package needed to be a little bit lower. Froggen basically misses everyone with it. Uh, at that point, he tries to Valk away, isn't even able to finish off double lift. And TSM takes everything. The main squad takes the top oh. turret, and oh. the double lift. Pix <laughs> gets executed to a turret. <laughs> Did not see that part. Why are you so good? <laughs> oh, that's how he died. At least uh, it had been more than 15 seconds since anyone had done damage to him, <laughs> so no one gets kill credit. Uh, I like it. Beautiful. All right, so we'll see TSM moving up now. Even more confidence. I'm sure that execute didn't shake double lifts. He'll be ready to go in that fight and put himself back down to some sub-100 HP as it goes down. The kills right now are on to hard, helping a little bit so he can be also a tanky initiator with KFO or even a tanky defender at this point. TSM seems to be driving the fights down the throat of Echo Fox here in front of their turrets. The second tier now on the top seems to be that priority, so it's going to be very tough to defend. Absolutely. Definitely a big shout out to Bjorks and Zorian in this game as well. Shockwave's totally on point. Yep. And also, matched Froggen's lane dominant style and out pressured him. Getting Orion pushed into a turret is not the easiest as an Ori. He had his That's pick. hard to farm. Yeah, he had his pick of whatever champion he'd want to lane against Corky most with. Mm -hmm. He picks Oriana, which normally is your you know your, your blind pick champion. Not to say Oriana right. is weak in lane. Oriana is very strong in lane. Uh, but Bjorkson just played it very well, and now he's. He's super fed. Yeah. Three completed items. Definitely doing the little second nature things we saw in the dragon fight where you leave the ball off on the side because it's a very easy thing to forget about for the opponent team. You keep moving it, you leave it somewhere, and then everybody piles onto it. That's how he got his ultimate. Yep. He's definitely showing that prowess on it without having played Oriana on the LCS stage for a while. Froggen still on that Corky though. If they get the right disengage fight, he should be able to poke down quite a few members, but they've got time before that. He's got to get bigger. The whole team of Echo Fox has to get bigger. Yeah, and they just don't have time uh, at the moment. This will push it to near 10,000 gold. Yeah. Uh, Dragon is up. That'll be number three for TSM, and then they will be able to move towards Baron after that. This is. Very simple game, actually, for TSM mm -hmm. at this point, because they were so much stronger in team fights. Uh, and Echo Fox has the tank team fighting composition. Uh, they're just not strong enough yet. Double it just a little bit off his game. You know, he died in <laughs> one turret. Doesn't even rend the dragon properly. I don't know. Sometimes in their old age, they start losing it. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, Rib. Whoa. <laughs> I can say that. I'm older. I have more chapters in my book. <laughs> No. <laughs> 25 minutes on the clock at TSM going pretty methodical here and it, it's uh, I'm sure it's very good for the fans to see this after a tough week last week the Dignitas game definitely not going their way and it, they were able to right the wrongs here even tongue-in-cheek knowing uh, instances that caused their, their problems we saw in Champion Select today yeah it's it's been a rocky road for mm -hmm. TSM that is for sure and it will continue to be a rocky road uh, you do not Instant fixes do not exist. And yep. there is clearly a lot of turmoil and things that this Team Solomid has had to work through. Uh, head coach has been let go. Yeah. Their charge, their coach on stage, has been subbed out essentially for Parth this week right. as they set the strategic direction for the team. Um, well then, the sports psychologist they had for a couple weeks, now he's gone. So there's, there's a lot of things that this team is just trying to find. They're swapping through a lot of people just to find the right recipe for this team of essentially all-star players right. from across North America and Europe. But even with that, they're, they're sitting at 7-5. So clearly yeah. the things haven't been working. This game, though, this is the type of game they want to be able to replicate. So we'll have to look at what went right in this game and try and create yep. the formula going forward to make that a consistent thing. Yeah, every look, everything looked good on paper, but it's that formula, getting that to gel. CTSM pushing towards the Baron. A far sight ward gives a second of sight over to Fox. I don't know if it's enough for them. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It is. It's enough to deter TSM a bit. That's, that means TSM definitely wants this fight over that. If they can leave Hanser in the bot lane, they're more than happy to. This is still a little tricky for TSM. 26 mm -hmm. minutes in, uh, with this team composition, they have good Baron secure if Callista can get enough spears in, uh, but they don't exactly kill it very fast. So Echo Fox does have time to kind of run up 
and do spot checks on a KFO. Would have teleport Ooh. if Echo Fox can get a good ward. Uh, so TSM looking to turn a fight. Yellowstar was the rest. Of the they're going to finish the Baron, actually. Big, big and Yellowstar. Ships passing in the night right by each other. The smite from Sunscare takes Baron. And this is not going to be a fight. They're actually trying to disengage it somewhat. No! Echo Fox wants it. That's a big hit. The crowd control kind of lapsed on each other there, so they didn't hold TSM down for too long. And TSM's firing back. Froggen's trying to do the same with the Rockets. But everybody's really just scratching each other's back at this point. Looks like TSM's going to look for the wave here with Baron now. Yeah, they do not lose a single person right. while getting the Baron. So they're going to actually try to continue this push. Baron minions versus normal minions. Who will win? Usually the Baron minions <laughs> right now. So Echo Fox trying to push that mid. They have to recall right away or they'll lose an inhibitor. Oh, okay. They're not going to go for any type of race. There actually is a ping from Keith. He's going to follow the way forward. They're going to lose quite a bit here. And now with seeing Qu Keith even forward, they might go ahead and just take the team out yeah. inside the base. It looks like they choose to do the safer roll. They're going to start yeah. heading out of this one. 7 to 2, 28 minutes in. Keith's going to probably be able to take that. He's got the wave coming up. Oh, wait, no, it's far. Yeah, it's I mean, mid. this is a weird interaction right here. Uh, basically, Echo Fox recognized the inhibitor would be down, so Keith is trying to stay yeah. longer to at least get some gold back Home to guard. equalize a little bit. Uh, but at the same time, all of the initiation spells were down because they just fought at Baron and kind of just traded ultimates. So they were safe split pushes for the time being. Right. Now, though, how fast can Elise go? Oh, there's smart Ballista. Of, smart of Keith to pass oh. through the jungle because with the Zizirop portal, Sven Skarin gets up to 20% move speed through turret. So if you try and run away from someone with the Zirop portal in lane <laughs> with a Runic Echoes and Boots of Swiftness, you will lose. He will catch you. So Keith had to path away from the the speedy lane that Sven Skarin was chasing him down with. And he didn't get the turret, but he oh. does keep his life. Very smart plays. Interesting buy here from Yellowstar. Actually goes for the Zeke's Harbinger. Mm. Double lift. Haven't seen one of those uh, actually in quite a while. Double lift gets that crit from Hurricane, but actually didn't decide to go with any other. Mal Mal Malmordius for him in his buy with the Scepter on top of his Blade of the Rune King. Yeah, Kalista also not a very crit-reliant champion. You right. get 30% crit from the Renan's Hurricane, and that'll obviously be able to go up to 80 when he binds with the Harbinger, but they're just going to fight here. I don't think that item matters. Oh. oh, no, the shot's so hard. Almost got taken down. Minions OP. But he finally gets himself out alive. TSM, that's not... Oh, TSM, that's what they wanted. Echo Fox really had no part in losing their jungler outside the base. Could have been fighting within the walls. They have the ability to fight under these inhibitors and make something happen, but not now. Oh, kind of cut off. Hard is going to be back quite soon. Remember, home guards are still there. Yellow Star goes in. That's the shockwave once again on three, and it just shreds the team of Echo Fox along with Double It's Rend. Team Solo Mid starts to move in for the victory. They're going for a few more kills. Since Karen sinks his fangs down into Keith. And Haunts is going to give a little dance on the fountain. That's going to be the Nexus turrets in the eyes of TSM. A very methodical game, 11 to 2. And a 14,000 gold lead. Eyes on the Nexus, another 50 gold in their pockets. That's going to be Team Solo mid taking down Echo Fox. Yeah, very decisive win here for Team Solo mid. After they had lost two games in week six. And with Echo Fox having a four game winning streak coming into this one. TSM puts a stop to all of that with this win. Only 30 minutes. They give up two kills. They win every team fight. Bjergsen's Oriana was dominant. Yes. Very nicely played in lane. You know, people keep picking these champions that are going to push them into the turret. He picks one that's going to be all right with that, even though it does become slightly difficult in the early stages to level with Ori, but, or farm. Does it well? Froggen still put on the pressure, just could not seem to get it going. Echo Fox still seemed to be able to play their game, but the openings weren't there from TSM. They didn't let anything happen that would make them fall behind. Yeah, and it was this, very clean. Exactly. It's the Echo Fox we've actually seen during their four game winning streak. It's just, it didn't work this time. Right. Against Team Solo Mid, their draft was the same, their in game style was the same, but when they tried to initiate the team fights, they just got outplayed for the most part. They had a slight gold disadvantages before them, but it's not like the initiations were clean. The difference between four man Malphite ultimates and Malphite ultimates that hit a lease yep. is drastic. And we really saw Team Solo Mid just execute much better in team fights this game.
going to be a tough week for a Echo Fox. They have Immortals as well, and we knew this coming in. So still more games to think about for them, but also a chance to prove themselves as well here. TSM, very good team. They still came off beating some decent teams that were in the middle of the pack. It's now time to tango with the top, and that's kind of what they're facing here. It's going to be difficult. It, it really will be. The synergy will have to be found. Yeah. Looking at TSM, eight and five now. They come up very strong with that matchup. They'll look to face Liquid tomorrow, and they're gonna need to bring that again. Yeah, we just saw Team Liquid win in our first game of the day. Yep. They'll be six and seven, TSM eight and five, as you just mentioned. So still important games as they kind of jockey for position. TSM still needs to keep their hopes up for that first round bye, yep. so they don't have to win all the way through the playoffs. So still very important games to be played. Very good the TS for TSM that they were able to pick up the win against Echo Fox and stop that one. We'll see how it goes. They always seem to be a team that can step up at that at that end of the end of the game roll when yep. they're going for the home stretch. So if they keep it going, the fans will be happy. For the inside perspective on that.